And I think the first thing I want to talk about, though it wasn't like it was your lead story in The Observer or anything, I think Will Ospreay's future is a giant story. It's an interesting story. I mean, it's, um, you know, I mean, in, in a sense, you could say it's the first time since, um, you know, Omega and those guys where somebody had become a really big star in Japan and kind of, you know, I mean, really big and kind of got to the point where we could say he's outgrown Japan and everyone knows how great he is and, you know, what's he going to do? You know, and especially in his situation where for, you know, he was very happy in Japan, but there's at some point, you know, there's the point of there's too much money to be made outside of Japan and, you know, 30 years old and he's hurting and, you know, a lot of different things. So, yeah, it's um, and, and, and having an incredible year. I mean, like, you know, it, it, I've, I've had people, you know, I kind of brought this up when he had the Zach match, but since then, a lot of people have gone, yeah, I think that no wrestlers ever had a year of matches of this level. And then he had the match with um, Mike Bailey on the impact pay-per-view that was just unreal. Great. And um, so, yeah, I mean, he's having, he's having the year and, and, you know, everyone's interested in him. You know I mean? There's no, there's nobody in charge who's like in denial of the value that he, he could bring. So, um, you know, I mean, I guess you, you would go right that, you know, it's, it's AEW or WWE, although Scott Demore went real strong on that, that they would certainly want him. And, and of course, New Japan would want to keep him, but I just don't know that those companies have the finances to, um, uh, go as high as WWE and AEW can go or would go. So that's, um, you know, and then there's the schedule aspect of it. There's the, you know, how far, you know, again, name value. There's a lot of different things. I mean, like he could be in, in WWE. I, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird thing because you, you just don't know how much they will push him. Although I think that they would, but you don't know, you don't know, but if he gets over really big there, it opens up more opportunities to be seen um, than in AEW. But AEW fits in better with him, especially because he loves to have those kind of matches. I mean, he'll have he he could have some good opponents in WWE without a doubt. You know, I mean, there's and many of them, but there's probably perhaps there's more in AEW, and 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 then there's the situation of um, but AEW there's um, I mean, the schedule could be better or worse depending on your point of view. I mean, in the sense of in AEW, look at those guys; they work 25 matches a year or. or 30 matches a year or whatever it's going to be a guy like him and in wwe it's probably going to be a lot more unless they decide and just go hey you don't have to wrestle as much so there's i i, I mean he he's got some you know i i just remember when when there was a another wrestler who was in this situation a few years ago who um you know we went through the pros and the cons you know actually there's a couple that, that you know over the, over the years over wwe and AEW. And, you know, everyone's different. Every wrestler's different. And um, I don't know, um, you know, there's, there's, if, if, you know, in your, in his situation, you know, it's, there's, it's, it just depends on what he wants out of life. Um, the, the thing that I thought was interesting was he said he is willing to move to the United States because before it had been kind of like, you know, he's, he's got the family, you know, he's got the, you know, the step, the stepson and everything in England and he didn't want to leave England. And that made it, difficult but not impossible uh, to you know for either company because you know you can still fly him in for weekends and you know he's willing to fly in but he doesn't want to relocate now he's talking about relocating which i think makes wwe a a greater possibility but it's better for AEW too if he was living here you know although you know like they were you know pock pock was living in england although they don't you know and AEW doesn't use pock i don't know if he's i guess he's probably injured again but um you know it, it's one of those you know, so I mean, his his willing to live here also changes the the game. That was the thing I wanted to bring up because when he had mentioned not wanting to relocate, you kind of throw WWE out of it, and then it's like it's yeah, sort of yeah, a yeah, two yeah, team yes. race there. Yes and no, in the sense of, you know, Walter said the same thing. 
that he wasn't going to leave. And then, you know, he was going to leave his family. And then, you know, things happened and, and, you know, he relationship broke up and he was willing. Um, and, you know, he worked for WWE and in, in the NXT division and, and was their big star. And if they were going to do, you know, I mean, one idea that was thrown at me was the idea of NXT Europe built around Will Ospreay. Now, how much money they're going to spend on that? But, you know, the revival of NXT Europe starts, you know, that thing of, you know, obviously from what happened with the original NXT UK and its effect on the independent scene in England and really hurt it badly. Um, but but at the same time, they didn't run regular shows or anything like that. They just did TV tapings. So you just don't know, like, you know, like they, they've got the go ahead from Endeavor to do it. But you just don't know, you know, exactly what that entails. So there's just, um, but if he's willing to move here, yeah, I think it um, it increases his value to both WWE and, and AEW if he's willing to move here. And of course, with AEW, he could still work New Japan big shows. So there's that advantage. Um, so he's got uh, he's got a major decision. But like uh, like I said before, with other people who have been in similar situations. He's very lucky because there's not a wrong decision. He's he's picking between two good decisions because he could make a lot of money either way. Perhaps his career will go better with one than the other, and there's arguments in both ways as to which one it would be. But in the end, he's going to make a lot of money. He is a great wrestler, so barring injury, um, you know, he's in theory got a lot of years left, um, especially because if it was you know if it was aw he wouldn't have as many matches but they still have that high injury rate um with wwe that i'm sure they would tone him down and and um would he be happy with that you know and maybe maybe he would and he's smart enough he's smart enough to know how to work now a much safer style than than a few years ago but he also hits really hard and you know i mean like you know so does gunther and others but you know you just don't know in wwe how that's going to get over and um yeah there's, there's, there's all sorts of questions he's you know february is going to be february will osprey is going to be a real interesting thing you know and and where he goes and what kind of wrestling he does and what state you know again we know we know what state wwe will be in i think that that AEW will probably be in the similar state that it is now, but um, you don't know because, you know, until AEW signs that new contract, you just, uh, there's so many variables when it comes to AEW. You know, if they sign a new contract and it's a big one, um, they can afford to go real, real high if they need to in this case. Um, and they, you know, and even if they don't, they, they, you know, Tony's gone real high with a lot of people. So there you go. I know you said that there are multiple places where he could go, but to me, the hiring of Barry Bloom says he's got his eye on two places. I can't imagine you hire Barry Bloom so that you could get a better deal with impact or with TNA and with new Japan. I agree with you. Um, I think that hiring Barry Bloom, um, you know, I mean, Barry Bloom, you know, most of Barry Bloom's clients are, are an AEW, but, uh, you know, I mean, Barry Bloom used to rep, you know, uh, Paul Levesque. I mean, may still, I mean, he may still, although he, Paul's not doing a lot of outside stuff, but, but he did rep him. So they have a, they both, the, they both have a relationship with him, but yeah. And I mean, I thought from the beginning, you know, that, that, you know, just the financial aspect of it, it was going to be AEW or it was going to be WWE. I never really thought impact. I know that's, I was surprised that, that Scott Demore brought it up because in a sense, my feeling is, is of course you want him. We all know that, but if you're not going to get him, why bring it up? Because all you're doing is setting up disappointment when you don't, um, unless it's just a way of trying to build up the company by using the fact, you know, and, and we'll just work there this, you know, last week and he's, and he's working there this week too, you know, in, on the England shows and, um, you know, th you know, they love him. I mean, he had, you know, maybe the greatest match in, in the company's history just a week ago. And, and he was over like crazy. So, I mean, it was, you know, if I'm them, of course you go for it. And maybe you can, maybe you can get Anthem. But the, 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 the thing, the, the thing with, with, is with, with the impact thing is where I don't think it can work is I just don't think that impact will be doing enough stuff to where 
paying someone at the level that WWE or, or AEW would pay him would be worth it. I don't, you know, I just don't, I don't think that you can drive as much revenue to make that deal worth it. Whereas with WWE and, and with AEW, um, you know, they generate so much revenue that, that they can make it, um, worth it you know wwe easily and AEW if they use them correctly and obviously uh if you're will osprey and wwe is on the table and you look at what they did with cody like that's got to be a blueprint right that's got to be like wow if if that if they can do that for me that that could be a game changer but obviously with AEW, yep. as we said you could still work new japan you uh the the matches the uh, just the importance of the match quality w- will be there more so in AEW than than and new japan and new japan yeah 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 i mean if he could go in there and, and still work you know g1 and win a g1 although you know then for for new japan do you want to push a guy who's only going to you know who's an AEW, you know and then have him win g1 you know i don't know if, but maybe they maybe they do you know i mean new japan's got some hard things too because you know historically they were able to um you know they did they you know until omega they didn't really lose top guys that they made that often um you know they lost you know i mean um i guess they they, because 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 they lost some guys to wcw but then you know they still they lost they lost aj aj yeah yeah that's true um that you know aj was one that uh yeah and he was uh you know yeah they they they, they lost eight well you know they lost all those you know they lost the whole group at that point yeah um but but the other ones i mean nakamura was a big one that you know um and that was a uh, an interesting one because again you know i mean the new japan natives going to wwe that was something new i mean you had yoshitatsu but he was a prelim guy we had some neighbors they had a little horse one day the horse disappeared and we didn't know if they sold it or aided. I think it was aided. I used to go over there and spend the night with the girls. I was quite a bit. Did you ever eat dinner there? No. The girls, the twins, they met they met this father and son. Oh and no. One of them married the father and the other married the son. Can you imagine how different ways they were related? The I, I actually can't. That was a weird bunch. The dad was a uh, stepdad to the girls, and they got, got kind of familiar once in a while. <laughs> what? Move on. Go. <laughs> Don't. Just go. He's was having a cow, that too. Town not inbred? <laughs> anyway, we used to have to churn butter. Are you having fun, Wendy? I don't know. I honestly don't know. (laughs) Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.